Trustee Purcell. Trustee Willis. Here. Trustee Colton. Here. Trustee Heiferman. Here. Trustee Harris Jones. Here. Trustee Roman. President Hofeld. Here. Representing staff this evening, to my left, our village manager, Napoleon Haney, to my right, our village attorney, Chris Cummings, to the audience's right, our police chief, Denise McGrath, Fire Chief Bob Grabowski, Economic and Community Development Director, Angela Maceres, Public Works Director, John Schaefer, and Assistant Village Manager, Tyler Hall. The minutes of July 11th. Any additions or corrections, Trustee Willis? None. Trustee Colton? Oh, no. Trustee Heiferman? I have none. Trustee Harris Jones. Nothing for me. I have a motion to approve the minutes, please. So moved. Second. Been moved by Trustee Colton, seconded by Trustee Willis. Roll call, please. Trustee Willis? Aye. Trustee Colton? Aye. Trustee Hyperman? Aye. Trustee Harris Jones? Aye. The minutes are approved. The claims list in the amount of $529,534.64. Comments or questions, Trustee Willis? I question for you. Trusty Colton. I'm fine. Trusty Heiferman. Everything's answered. Trusty Harris Jones. Nothing for me. May I have a motion to approve the claims list, please? So moved. Second. Been moved by Trusty Colton, seconded by Trusty Harris Jones. Roll call, please. Trusty, uh, I'm sorry, Trusty Willis. Aye. Trusty Colton. Aye. Trusty Heiferman. Aye. Trusty Harris Jones. Aye. The claims list is approved. Of that 500, almost $530,000 claims list, three items comprise the majority of that list. The payment for the Science Center roof was $83,000. Public Works, several vehicles, $97,000. And our payment to Thorn Creek Sanitary District was $94,000. That amounted to $274,000 or 52% of that claims list. Hear from the audience. If anyone would like to address the board on any subject not on the agenda, please raise your hand. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. Hello, my name is Carrie Bonanote, and I'm the executive director of the Spotlight Performance Academy, which is a performing arts organization right here in Homewood. Um, first, I wanted to say thank you to trustees Heiferman and Colton for coming out to our fundraiser this um, past weekend. We had a car wash, which raised $1,100 for the performing arts. So thank you so much for that. Um, I had a question about what is the application process for a nonprofit organization to receive um, support from the village similar to what like the HAC or the Homewood Science Center gets, namely in property. The Cummings. What were you looking for? Um, so a place to run our programming. We So what we do is we provide programming for the community in the performing arts. We have a very large choir program for children through adults. Um, we just did a community musical, which we ended up having to perform in Park Forest. Um, and we had a couple sold out evenings. And so we are looking for space in which to hold our programming. I would think the appropriate thing to do would be to contact the village staff, the village manager, and see what facilities are available. Mm -hmm. And then um, it would normally not come to me unless there was a lease or some kind of agreement involved, but I think the first step is to contact the village manager. Oh, perfect. Thank you. I know. <laughs> he's, play, he's played, he's jammed with us a, one, one time before. That was super fun and we need to do it again. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board this evening on an item not on the agenda? Yes, yes sir. I don't see the agenda, but is there will be a time to ask questions about the condo? Go, the, the there certainly shall yeah. be. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. The on the uh, with regard to the on the vote, we have the family of Jim Wright here today. I'd like to vote on item A, the donation of the vehicle, uh, the fire chief's car to uh, to the village as a separate item. So, with that being said, I have a couple separate items too. Is this the time to ask? For no, that? I'll take care of those after okay. the on, on the vote. It's red. Is red. Awesome. Uh, may I have a motion to approve? Resolution 3151, the donation of the vehicle, please. So moved. Second. Been moved by Trustee Heiferman, second by Trustee Colton. Roll call, please. Trustee Willis. Aye. 
Trustee Colton? Aye. Trustee Heiferman? Aye. Trustee Harris-Jones? Aye. The motion is approved. Chief Krabowski? Whereas Jim Wright served on the Village of Homewood Fire Department as a cadet from 1975 to 1977, was promoted to a paid on-call member in 1977, and ultimately retired as a second lieutenant in 1997, and whereas Jim Wright was elected as trustee for the Village of Homewood in April 1997 and served proudly through April 2001. And whereas Jim Wright was actively involved with the Homewood Historical Society since 1983, serving several terms as president and authoring the books Homewood and Homewood Through the Years. And whereas as a liaison to the Homewood Heritage Committee, Jim Wright promoted the heritage of the village through his efforts to bring recognition to the historical significance of Dixie Highway and initiated the village's first sister city relationship with Homewood, Alabama. And whereas Jim, after 63 years of life, transitioned to eternity on March 10, 2023, and whereas Jim Wright adored the Homewood Fire Service nearly as much as he loved his Homewood community and deserved I'm sorry, and desired to leave his treasured fire chief car to the village of Homewood. And whereas Jim Wright gifted the village of Homewood his beloved 1954 Ford fire chief car to be displayed at the Homewood Fire Department and to be driven on the Homewood 4th of July parade for many years to come. Whereas Jim Wright will be remembered for his wisdom, his unyielding faith, his commitment to the well being of Homewood and his commitment to community service and servanthood. Now, therefore, be it resolved by President Hofeld and the Board of Trustees that Jim Wright, a lifelong Homewood resident, longtime historian, and dedicated community member, is honored and commembered, commended for the generous donation of one of his most prized possessions, the 1954 Ford Fire, uh, Fire Chief car, to the village of Homewood. Thank you. Chief? Um, I just wanted to take a moment to thank the family uh, for the car and the donation. It's sitting out here if you hadn't had a chance to see it. Um, I'm guessing that probably 90% of the people in this room probably knew Jim one way or another for the years. So everybody that I do know, I know, did know Jim. So um, I first met Jim back in 1980 when I was a uh, young cadet at the Country Club Hills Fire Department. The only two departments that had that program back then were home and Country Club Hills. And even though I became chief here all these years later, Holman was actually the first fire station I ever walked into. So I always like to tell that story. And Jim was one of the first people I actually met. He was a few years older than me. And he was one of the instructors teaching the cadet program back in the day. So I've known him all these years. Um, I know one of his things that he always wanted to uh, remember for was being just a good guy. And he was just a great guy. He was awesome. So we are so thankful to the family that he come for donating this to us. And um, it'll stay around for years. We didn't make it to the 4th of July parade this year, but I, every year after this, it's going to be there. I can do that. So thank you so much. I just want to say my name is Napoleon Haney, village manager for the village of Homewood. Met Jim roughly five and a half years ago. I uh, just want to share the impact that a person can make on you. I met Jim probably like uh, like one year. Met him, got a chance to be around him for one year. He was a member of the historic society, right? So during COVID, they needed someone to kind of host the Zoom meetings. Because he was such a good guy, I was compelled to host the meetings, right? <laughs> and it was like, I remember my wife would say, why are you rushing home on your bike to start a Zoom meeting that you're not even a part of? And I just turned to him and said, Jim Wright? He was that type of guy. So I just wanted to share that. He meant a lot to all of us. That's all. Uh, Jim, Jim was a personal friend, and uh, I, I miss him terribly. Uh, families here, Rich, uh, Nancy, come on up and Accept the resolution. Oh, great. I'm so glad you passed it because we're not taking the program. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Thank Mike. You, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.
And, and a good tribute to Jim would be if you want to join the Homewood Historical Society. If you're not a member, do join. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Mrs. Thomas, the remainder of the omnibus vote, please. Board is asked to pass resolution R3152, authorizing President Hofeld to enter into an intergovernmental cooperate, cooperation agreement to consolidate the ECOM and SOUTHCOM public safety joint emergency phone systems. The village is currently a member of ECOM. The board is asked to give President Hofeld the power to enter into a two year retainer agreement between the village and Laner Munchen Limited of Chicago. The law firm provides labor legal services. The board is asked to approve a budget amendment allocating $30,000 of federal American Rescue Plan funds for the downtown outdoor speaker project, waive competitive bidding due to a sole source provider, and approve the purchase of equipment for Airnetics of Georgia in an amount not to exceed $22,905 and $7,095 for unforeseen installation costs for the downtown outdoor speakers. The board is asked to approve a letter of intent with HCF Homewood LLC for the purchase and redevelopment of the property at 2024 Chestnut Road. The developer is proposing to build a five-story 59 unit residential building at this location that is currently a village parking lot. The board is asked to pass ordinance M2259 authorizing village manager Haney to sell or dispose of 13 items as surplus property. The board is asked to approve ordinance M2260 authorizing President Hofeld to enter into a lease renewal agreement with the Homewood Arts Council for use of the village auditorium through June 2024. Thank you, Mrs. Thomas. With regard to item D, that's going to be deferred in that a supermajority is required uh, for that. So item D will be deferred this Excellent. evening. Uh, with that, did you want to? If, if we can pull out item E. Item what? E. E will be discussed yes, separately, yes. correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Comments or questions with any item on the agenda other than item D or E? Okay. Or discussion. Trustee Willis, anything? Yeah. Trustee yeah, Holt. I'm good with all that. Trustee Heckerman. Um, I'm good with everything and um looking to see if I have anything um no, it's all good. Trustee Harris Jones. All good for me. Okay. With that man, I have, well, we'll then break them off. Uh item D is deferred, and you wanted item E. Discussed separately, correct? Correct. correct? All right, may I have a motion to approve items B, C, F, and G? Second. Been moved by Trustee Willis, seconded by Trustee Colton. Roll call, please. Trustee Willis? Aye. Trustee Colton? Aye. Trustee Heiferman? Aye. Trustee Harris Jones? Aye. Those items are approved. With regards to item E, Comments or questions from anyone in the audience? This is a, or was the gentleman who was here? Mr. Priest. Sir, item E. Uh, I had some questions about it. Um, I wish I wish there was more information on your website about the, the whole the sale. It's apparently going up for $1. It's been sold for a dollar. Is that true? It, that's the terms, correct? That's the terms. And that's not unusual. Village owned property. Village owned property. Right. Um, it's just, I, now I, again, I don't really know a lot about this. I know we've had a hard time. You know, we had a hard time moving Bogarts right until we kind of um, gave them that that deal. Right? Is that is kind of a similar deal? Bogarts was privately owned, and uh, we acquired it through the back mm -hmm. taxes. That's what the delay was. Can I just interject for a minute? Yeah. This is not the sale tonight. Okay. All this is is a letter of intent. If there was a sale, that would come back before the board at a future date. This is, this is not a letter of intent to sell it for one dollar to. Uh, uh, go, I'm sorry. Go go ahead. This is not the contract to sell the property tonight. It's a letter of intent that's non-binding on either side, 
the develop at this point it gives the app the developer an opportunity to do diligent can't talk due diligence. due diligence and if this comes back before the board there would also be uh negotiations between the developer and the village as far as a redevelopment agreement so what's in that letter of intent is not the final product is my point and there is this is not the sale tonight of the property just so we're clear on that. and the letter of intent that you intend to sell to one person you have the, the the buyer in mind is that part of the intent correct the letter speaks for itself yes well where is where, where can i view the letter so all of our uh, board agenda items are online uh, to open to the public you know, the full agendas with all of the details the board memos the exhibits always online okay all right i appreciate that okay thank you thank you any other comments or questions with regard to item e yes ma'am thank you sure <clears throat> Hi, uh, I'm Maggie Gosselin. I'm a home resident, Homewood resident. And my question is, if the parking lot is developed into a residential area, is there any plan to provide the parking spaces that are being taken away? Because, you know, I was part of the um, focus group for the transit um, authority. And one of the recurring things that was brought up over and over again was the lack of parking for um, people to come and actually park and then walk around the downtown Homewood area. And I know we have street parking, but not everyone is comfortable doing parallel parking. So having that type of parking lot is really essential um, to bringing people into downtown Homewood and staying into downtown Homewood. I, I think our attorney coming said this is the letter of intent, but yes, all of those things are under consideration. Until we see the final plans proposed for that particular site, we can't address those specific needs. But I can tell you, uh, Angela Maceras has looked at the traffic study, which was conducted in 2018, I believe, with regard to development on that parking lot. And uh, we also, through Public Works, are looking at having Harwood made one way, one additional block. Right now, it's southbound. When you come out from under the viaduct to Elm, to take it one more block, one lane, and have angle parking, which is easier to park. Okay. So those are in the genesis stages. And then for the um, potential residential building, and I get that it's just a letter of intent, but... I mean, is will the new residential building that's already in place place be finalized so that we can see what the interest is in that residential building before we bring on another one? And then we have two residential buildings in downtown that like I would like to see what the outcome of the first one is before we start developing a second one. Good question. We can get that this evening. The developers are here. Uh, that gentleman with the without the tie on uh, with the leader. white hair. Uh, <laughs> he he is a developer for that particular building, and he can tell you the occupancy already uh, when what that's going to be, and he can address that Perfect. in generalities. Okay, thank okay. you. Sure. Any other comments or questions? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Brooke King Labrec. Um, I live over in Old Homewood, and um, I had a question actually about the water tower, because my understanding when we were told that the water tower needed to be moved was that the only property available to move that water tower to was the old library, which displaced several small businesses. My masseuse is one of them who's present here today. My child's therapist was another. Um, and I have a few other colleagues and friends that were also displaced by that move, and some of whom were not able to stay in the downtown Homewood area because they were forced out of their building. So my question is, if it sounds to me like, and I'm sure there are logistics that have probably been discussed prior that I'm not privy to, but um, it seems like there was an option all along, and it's our back parking lot that we're selling for a dollar. Is that true? Or 
I mean, wh why wasn't that an option? Was it because we wanted to sell it? And if so, why did we want that so badly? Why does Homewood want so badly another residential block rather than thinking more innovatively about like things that we can do with that space that serve our community in terms of like public service or um, things that provide a service to our community members. We, we are doing the trends of what other communities have done along particularly the Burlington line, mm -hmm. LaGrange, Western Springs, Downers Grove, Westmont. Downtown development brings people in. And if you've watched our meetings or attended meetings in the past, you know our goal is to bring more people into the downtown. 100% all about that. I am curious about the answer to my water tower question, but also um, as much as I appreciate what you're saying, Mayor, um, about those other communities, I love this community because we're not those communities and we are different. And I love that um, we think differently and we have more innovational ideas than those bland blocks that I see when I go through those communities. Because think Homewood, right? I, I beg to differ with you. Uh, there's vitality and life in all of those communities, particularly in the downtown events. If you've attended any of them. I have, downtown, absolutely. But I also that. think they're bland and beige and blocky and like we have so much more going for us than those communities. But so what about the water tower? Could that have Mr. gone to parking? Uh, regarding the water tower, uh, the water tower was discussed. We looked at several properties uh, regarding the water tower. There was uh, as part of the village planning uh, to look to, to develop this parking lot into either residential slash commercial. So that was still on the table for possible development. The property was for sale, uh, the old library building. It's a very difficult site for somebody to build on as far as uh, uh, residential or commercial there. Uh, the property was in some disrepair and needed a lot of work. And that's one of the reasons why the uh, property owner at that time wanted to sell. Uh, we looked at property across the street. Uh, all those options were uh, put in front of the board for discussion. There was discussion on it on which property would be the most viable, the most uh, uh, best for the downtown area. And uh, this uh, water tower does need to be replaced. So that property was... Uh, brought from the board and was selected. And what was the benefit of doing it there rather than? We, can, we're, we can't build a water tower right where it's continually at. So if we built it on the parking lot, you would lose that development there. This is a much better site to develop than the corner lot over there because of parking and everything else. We also looked at what the effect on um, in the residential neighborhood, you know, how that may affect it. Something we looked at the parking lot for uh, at the time when it was St. Joe's, uh, to put it back there, but we worried about the housing value on uh, Gosjock because of the casting of a shadow and then everything else in this big tower that's all set in your backyard. So that's why it was kind of moved away, put over near the uh, uh, Metra CN tracks over there, it's kind of isolated by itself. And uh, then what will happen is once that tower is constructed, well, this tower will be removed. May I have the floor for one more question? Last one. Um, my understanding was also, I think I read from previous meeting minutes that there was um, consideration to a corner property here, an older historical building that the uh, village recently acquired, and that that would also be turned into a residential building. Is that correct? It is correct. And uh, yes. what the federal government has done to slow down the economy with high interest rates has put a damper on that particular building. Okay, so that is slowed, but not necessarily stopped. Correct. So we could suddenly have three five-story, four and five-story residential we don't have buildings. The, we don't know the height, what's being proposed yet. Well, the uh, one that the was final proposed there had a grocery store on the bottom level, Correct. plus four additional levels on top. This one is proposing five, and this one is four. It's just suddenly going... We, we don't have anything concrete that was thrown out there. Sure. And I think it's wonderful that more people in the downtown, particularly having a grocery store in the downtown, if they were to come to fruition. Love that idea. Multi-use sure. is awesome. It's just right. suddenly having three buildings. We have to wait and see what happens on that particular yeah. site. Thank you for your time. You're I welcome. appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anyone, anyone else would like to address the board on this subject this evening?
Hi, good evening. I'm Michelle Yates, a Homewood resident. Um, I think I'm confused about where this redevelopment is going to be. Is it here? This parking lot, like right here? Correct. The one that's full of cars? Correct. Like, so I think maybe my question is obvious, but like where, if there's like a residential building there, like where do those people park? And then also where do the, you know, 59 cars, maybe more of the residential building, where, where do they park? Ms. Yates, when we get the final proposal, we'll know more about it. But the initial proposal was to have first floor parking for the building itself. So those cars would be contained within the site. Okay. Now, as far as other parking goes, Ms. Maceras, if you could touch briefly on that with regard to the metro parking lots and everything. Else. Yeah, so so the proposal that we that we had seen. Could you come um, up here, please? Oh, of course. So a, a couple of things. The proposal did contain the residential parking was in the building, and it did not cover the entire lot. So there is some shared parking for employees. The municipal service vehicles will remain too, because there's a portion of the lot that cannot be built on. It has geothermal wells under it. The other thing is that on the website is a study, a parking study that we did specifically for the replacement of parking at the Village Hall parking lot in 2018. It is, if you go to how do I find, and it's the Village Hall parking lot replacement study, that study recommended a couple of options for parking. And one of those was the parking lot directly to the west, which is empty now. You can see the South Suburban um, Mass Transit District. We do own that now. We're also looking at re-allocating um, the, the street so that there's more on-street parking. But that is a very detailed study of where all the parking is downtown, where people actually park during events, and um, where we can shuttle some of that parking for the public. Yeah, I think I'm just I'm I'm just very confused. I'm very concerned about the parking situation, um, like if this residential building goes through. And I understand, I hear you keep saying this is just an intent, it's just an intent, but I, I mean, I think I would I would ask the trustees to really think about tabling this conversation um, or this vote for the time being. Um, I appreciate something somebody else said, like we should wait at least a year or two to kind of see how the Hartford building shakes out. And I will say that building was supposed to have parking as well. And they're now renting um, part of the Lavoot parking lot, you know, because um, there isn't going to be enough parking for the Hartford building. And, and you know, and, and, you know, my husband owns a business, a shop right here on Harwood. We can see it through the window here. So I feel like we're sort of well poised to kind of see the the issues with parking that are going to happen here in Homewood if this building goes up. My other concern here is also how much money is the village prepared to give this free developer? It's not just the sale of the building for a dollar. I I would like to know how much money the village has given the developer for the Hartford building plus we know that there was $850,000 given to the restaurant owner which I mean, this is a crazy amount of money. I, I and think that needs to be corrected, Ms. Yates. Uh, that is initial money, and that comes back to us in places for eating tax as well as real estate taxes. It was an empty building, so please realize that. I, I understand that, but I also think that giving money into these projects is an opportunity cost. It's money that's not being given to other things like small business owners in downtown Homewood as well. $850,000 to a restaurant as one example. And, and I mean, I don't even know how much money was given to the redevelopment of the Hartford building, but I assume quite a bit of money. Like again, 850,000, if we just take that number, that's 85,000 for 10 small business owners in Homewood. And as someone married to a small business owner in Homewood, I know that that amount of money Initiate your would, time is up, please. would make a huge difference. All right. We do have programs to assist small businesses, and anyone that's interested can see Ms. Maceras. But also, when I was please. Right? Because he's situated in a district, he was told by Angela Maceras that that money is earmarked specifically for mixed-use residential commercial and specifically for the Hartford. What is your so, husband's business? 
What is your husband? Oh, oh, really? No, he did not. Have, yeah, that that's not. <laughs> yeah, we, are, that, we are working. We are working, working with, with him. Yeah, we're working with him on another location. Yeah. Please have him reach out. Yeah. Go right ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so my name is Keith Wingate. I've been a Homewood resident long enough to get a sense, a little bit of a sense of deja vu all over again. Uh, back when we had a train station entrance on this side, I remember getting off and walking by the parking lot, seeing a big sign is a coming soon condos for a while. So I was just wondering what happened to that project and how this one is different, please. Uh, the market changes, as you know, between condos and apartments. Right now, apartments are hot. Uh, that's why the Hartford building, are uh, that's 36 apartments. What is going to be proposed on this particular site so far are apartments, not condominiums. So it's, again, something that's in demand. So, so and believe me, a one. developer wouldn't wouldn't take the risk of putting their money and, and uh, their efforts into a project if they didn't think it would be successful. Sure. Um, and we're very fortunate they've chosen Homewood for that. Okay, thank you for that answer. And then uh, with respect to the water tower, the young lady that was discussing the water tower, my only comment there is I hope we've taken into account the effect on local businesses. I mean, you could ask uh, Tony Ramirez, as the owner of Grady's, what happened to his foot traffic when the, the station got closed, right? And my uh, one of the Homewood businesses that I also am a big fan of and love to patronize is uh, patronize is CAMS right across the street from uh, the, the proposed landing site for the water tower. And I'm just wondering what would happen, uh, how his business would be impacted as well as ingress and egress to where I live, uh, rather than having to go around by the casino or by the truck stop. This is the way I get to and from home. Uh, and I was just wondering and if we considered that. As these projects will be developed, you, the public will be given input uh, the ability to uh, provide input for those, be it a water tower, be it an apartment building, another apartment building. Our meetings are open and all the proposals are, are project, proposed then. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, uh, Rachel Shores. I am a 20 plus year resident of Homewood. I'm also a small business owner for about nine years, 10 years. Um, my question is, this is a proposal, right? We're with letter our of letter of intent, intent correct. correct. Um, when is the meeting where we get to ask all the questions and like, when does that happen? So we've put the letter of intent out, the developers on board, he's coming up with all this stuff. Then we ask the public about what their input correct. is. Is that what it is? Like correct. you get an opportunity to view the, the project. And, but, and the, but is it already at that point, uh, this is what we're doing. We just need to vote on it take a look at what we've decided, or is it we really want to hear your input before we we, we well, set up our, our meetings or public meetings and input is welcome. I love it when there's people in the audience. Too many times we have one or two people in the audience. This is wonderful. I understand. And, but and, when we ask specific questions, we're told this isn't the time. So I just right. want to know when that time is for the specific. When the specifics. audience uh, is finished making comments, we'll have the proposed developer make his statement. Okay, but then after he makes his statement, then we can start asking no, these questions. This is strictly a letter of intent this evening. Okay, it's not... so after the letter of intent, yes. then what? Then when is the public hearing whenever his, about this? Whenever he proposes his, his actual development. Okay, so will that be a special meeting? It'll be a public meeting. It'll, It'll be just the board. regular village board Correct. meeting. Okay, Correct. Huh. all right. I just want to make sure because we're not always clear on when the public gets to talk about their opinions about public, these things. Public, our... Uh, our Chronicle uh, editor is here and he's well versed at this. I don't believe there's ever been a subject before the board where we haven't asked for audience participation. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we're here and we're asking questions and we're being told this isn't the time. So That's I'm correct. just clarifying. This is premature. Okay, mm -hmm. so there will be an announcement and we will all of be course. there to discuss it, but it will be discussion, not just uh, what is your opinion about what we've decided? It will be a discussion, correct. Okay. You can. We've right. always You've done heard that. that right? With input. Okay. Always input. Thank you, Ms. Shore. Is there anyone else? I'm, I'm sorry, please. What? Before the train leaves the building. Yes. Carrie Bonanote again, third edition. Um, I have two concerns. Um, two of two of my friends are um 
have mobility issues and they say if they could not park in this village parking lot, they absolutely could not go to the farmers markets and events um, that we put on here because that's a really important space that they can always find parking really close to the event. So I just wanted to make sure that you are aware of that. And then also I know coming down the road is the, um, per, the renovation of the Homewood Auditorium for the Performing Arts Center. Hopefully. Wonderful. Hopefully. Where are the hundreds of people that are going to be drawn to those events going to park? We have the Metro parking lot that's open weekends, evenings, and a sidewalk will be constructed from Chestnut into that parking lot. So there'll be plenty of egress uh, to that parking lot, pedestrian access as well as automobile. Uh, if you notice, there's some designated handicap spots right next to the village hall. Those won't be altered at all. Fantastic. That's great to hear. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I, I guess I would like I to get, go back to the letter. Of the um, so I guess what I find interesting is that we're going to have a letter of intent and then we're going to get a proposal about this building, right? I would think first, shouldn't we have a discussion from the public of should we even consider a proposal for this lot? So I feel like the train's already moving forward. We're going to propose this. The public could say no, but it's going to go forward and you may give us some grievances as far as we'll do this instead of this, but it's going to happen. I don't feel like we've had a discussion. Should it happen? That's my point. May, may I comment on Go right ahead. On that. <clears throat> what you're saying is that we pre we're predisposed, we, we, we already agree to things before it's been presented. It's not the case. That's why, let's say, I'm sitting here. Um, I haven't seen the proposal. I have no idea. I know it's 50 something units. I know parking in the first work, nothing beyond that. Um, yeah. but I, I understand that, but you guys want it to happen. Otherwise, you wouldn't be seeking the proposal. In the years that I've been but does the public that. want it to happen? Have we answered that question? Yeah. That's, That's a further, a further meeting. Yeah. Okay. But that should happen Thank before you. the proposal. This gentleman had a head start. <laughs> Hi, Mike Dickover, Homewood resident. Um, I guess my first question is, how does this happen? Like, what, what is the catalyst that starts the process? Is it a developer coming to the village and saying, hey, I'm interested? Or is it the village saying, hey, we have this piece of property and we're looking to do something with it? It's both. And in this case, which one was it? I think it was us coming to a, or talking to different developers to see if they were interested. If you remember, as uh, uh, the gentleman said earlier, Condos have been proposed over here, and they spent quite a bit of money. If you remember, they had a, a showroom in the uh, in Laboot, where they actually showed what their their units were going to look like. And uh, as the condo market fell apart, that so did that project. So we knew that other developers might be interested in it during the pandemic, and all everything was quiet. Nothing at all happened. Uh, in the meantime, the developer of the Hartford building expressed an interest to do something on this particular site. And we said, fine, give us a proposal, we'll proceed with it. Okay, so it sounds like in, in this particular instance, it's the developer that came to the it, village. It's both, it's both Mike. Fair enough. Um, and, and I guess, so my, my question is, and this is going back to what Ms. Gosling and, and Yates brought up was, um, we don't know yet what the Hartford building is gonna bring us. So we're putting a lot of these eggs into- We'll get that in a few minutes. Understood, but, we're, but just, if I can have my time, we're putting a lot of eggs in Mr. Flanagan's basket and we don't see any of those chicks developing yet. So I'm just a little concerned that we've got multiple things going into one person's uh, development and we're not exactly sure how that's gonna all come to fruition. So that, that just gives me pause and I, and I hope the, the board uh, recognizes that and, and considers that. Um, and then getting back to, you know, I think what other folks have brought up about the discussion that we have, um, I, I'm hoping that the discussion is more than what we saw with the casino, because the casino was really just a, this is what we're doing. Um, and here's the presentation. We're going to take five minutes and then we're going to vote on it. And despite what everybody said, there really seemed to be no conversation at all, except for Ms. Washington, who's no longer uh, on the board. Um, and then finally, I think I would be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, Mr. Flanagan donated $500 to the Greater Homewood Party of February of this year. 
So I don't know if that's you know any sort of interest, conflict of interest, but I think it's just something that should be solved. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Ms. Maceres, with regard to the POD study for the downtown and number of units that could be uh, absorbed. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, as we've said, it's a letter of intent, which gives a developer in the village some time to, to look at this. We did publish for this and got no other proposals, which is why this is the proposal that we are um, recommending the letter of intent with. We did, um, so we are in the middle of doing a TOD master plan, which will take a look at um, these properties together. We did a redevelopment plan in 2004, which identified these properties. It was a public process as um, redevelopment sites. And we also had a housing study done at that time that did say that we had the market for between 200 and 250 um, units downtown. So we are we're basing this off of a series of studies. Uh, we will, when the developer um, gets closer to having a plan that is a little more solid, we will have a public hearing with the Planning and Zoning Commission where we will discuss parking, we will discuss traffic, we will discuss the market study. Uh, so all of those things will happen while the developer is, um, while we're holding this property so that the developer can do their due diligence. The village will also be doing studies and having public meetings. What was the absorption? How many units? 200 to 250 okay. units throughout downtown. And thus far, we've had 36 units. This, in the... Thus far, we have 36. Who said that study was 2004? No, the, the plan was 2004. That study was 2016, I think. Okay. Any other comment, ma'am? Ma'am, yeah, you had your time, please. Ms. Yates? Ms. Yates, this isn't a discussion. This is for public com comments, individuals, please. Is there anyone else who would like to come up and address the board? Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. Hi, I'm Meredith Thetford. I'm a Homewood resident as well. Surprise, surprise. Um, a lot of people have asked some great questions, which is great. I um, agree with some of them, but I also realize that we are in a community that is pretty much landlocked and that we're not going to be building more subdivisions, right? We have nowhere to go that way. So I do understand reusing and revitalizing some of the downtown area. What I want to know is, can we be very thoughtful? And if we're going to be putting in residential units and giving money and giving um, generous discounts to developers, can we look at what some of the residents are going to be? Can we ask them to allocate a certain percentage for senior or low income housing? Can we look for um, mixed use buildings and be very thoughtful about that as well so that we not just have people that live there, we have other things to do maybe on the first floor. I think those are very good questions. I, I most certainly will. That's what I'd like to see because I know that it's gonna happen and I'm not opposed to increasing the amount of people that get to live in Homewood, but I wanna be able to do it thoughtfully. I think those are very good questions. Thank you. And will this have an impact um, on our school district as well? Uh, these buildings that are going up as far as like taxes, tip money, stuff like it, that. It's uh, funny, most most of the, the resident, future residents for the Hartford building are either seniors or are single. All right, well, I wanna see yeah. like but just some to of that. Yeah. The TIF Act also provides that if there are school-age children, there's separate money set aside out of the TIF Act, that, out of the TIF proceeds that have to be paid to the school district. Okay. And obviously, the, you know, the village would abide by that. Okay. Also, I am one that utilizes this parking lot when I come with my mother who has mobility issues, and she also cannot parallel park. Don't tell her I told you all that, but it's true. Okay, so if she's going to drive, she's parking there. And it does get overly utilized during all of our bigger events. You know that. So things to think about. We want to keep our parking. We want to keep things thoughtful. And <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Any other comments before board comments? Yes. Hi, I'm Patty DeBoer. I am a teacher at Hello. Little School. Um, now that we've had this discussion um, about going back to the schools, population does concern me as a teacher. We are popping out of our seams at the school. Um, I'm an interventionist now. I'll be teaching and reading. I'm in a mobile. My classroom I share with, with there's three of us in one classroom. Where are we going to put the kids? We are popping out of all, about all three buildings. Where are the kids going to go? 
if you had that building, that building, and another one. Just think about it. Where are the kids going to go? Because they're not going to fit in the school because we just don't have the room. There, there are very few school aid children that will be in that we, building. And that, well, we'll get the okay, statistics okay. in a moment. But now just think, what will you do if the next building or the next building has more children? We have to really think about that because as teacher, that concerns me. And I never thought of that until we just started talking about it. I don't know how I'm going to teach them all. Where are we going to put them? So please keep that in mind when we go forward, if we're going to continue talking about this in the education of our kids and our community. That's all. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Anyone else before we have the developer speak? Mr. Flanagan, Mr. Carlson. If you could give us just a question to Rose this evening about your current building, the Hartford building. Can you tell us the successes that you've had there? Sure. My name is Tim Flanagan. Um, I am joined with my partner, Mark Carlson, who is also our general contractor for the building uh, in the center of downtown, the Hartford building. A little bit about myself. I started uh, developing here uh, about 30 years ago on uh, Halstead Avenue with a company called Mid-America Development. And oversaw the Washington Park Plaza development, the Jewel, the Targets, uh, brought coals to the community and um, was a participant and an observer of the Lakota Group's uh, survey of how should we develop or how should you develop the downtown home. I've tracked that proposal for many, many years. Um, it, uh, it eventually seemed like the right thing to do uh, in that uh, apartments, residential units are become very popular. Uh, you have a great uh, tr uh, train system here with Amtrak and, and the uh, Metro. So in these TOD uh, trans-oriented destined developments that we've been doing around uh, the Midwest, uh, my relationship with the mayor led us to conversations about what to do uh, with the uh, the old Bellagio building that uh, the village had acquired. I said, uh, I, I talked to uh, my partners and we elected to make some presentations as to what we thought would fit there. The mayor said, uh, we certainly need another restaurant for the downtown. This was during a pandemic and we were able to secure what we believe will be a, a great addition to the community. Um, we have 36 units. It's only four. It's a four-story building. It feels big downtown, but uh, to be honest, it's it's a uh, it's a small uh, residential building in comparison to what goes on out there in the marketplace. Um, so, uh, a little information about the building. I, I apologize for our dust. Uh, it seems to take twice as long to build these as I would like, and our and my partner here, Mark Wood. But um, to do it right the supply chain, the financial world that we live in, the interest rates that we're dealing with today, uh, just compound uh, the problems that we that we see as, as uh, finishing a project on schedule and on time and on budget, if possible. Uh, we have a 45% uh, committed residence for the building. Uh, we are uh, mostly uh, uh, studio units, one bedroom units, and uh, probably 27%, I think, are two bedrooms, some with two, two no baths. The, popul the popular uh, units right now are the studio units, they're all gone, and the two bedroom, two bath units that are, um, we're being told uh, the other bedroom will function as an office. Um, you know, we, we would love to see families come into the building, but in these, these are smaller units in today's market, you build smaller units, that's what, the millennials are accustomed to. Uh, so our market study has showed that we are seeing uh, residents who are looking to uh, downsize uh, uh, coming to our building. We're looking, uh, we're seeing millennials who still work downtown, who um, uh, will uh, you know, use their, their residence for offices part of the time and, and then go downtown the other part of the time. So uh, in the middle, as, as uh, Mr. Cummings uh, stated, if uh, children were to come in to the building, families were to bring children into the building, which would be fine. We have to commit to uh, contribute to the school if those children come outside the district. Um, this is a private public partnership. It's really the only way things get done today. Uh, you know, our equity contribution is massive. 
Um, it, it's uh, the real estate taxes in South Coast County are, are uh, detrimental to development. And uh, I'm familiar with that because of all the commercial I built on Halston, as well as uh, now looking at what we're, uh, our tax bill will be here on this building. So we hope to um, complete the uh, parking areas and the uh, pavers, which will uh, button up the exterior of the building. Our first residence, we hope to move in on September 1st. Um, all the inspections are going on right now. Uh, we, we think it's a very quality project. Everybody has their opinion as to how it looks and, and whether it fits. And we, we went through the appearance committee, we went through all the meetings and, and uh, feel we're, we're very proud of, of the building. We think it's gonna be a great addition. Uh, the restaurant will have outdoor seating. Uh, it's a very sex, successful uh, quality operator. Um, so that's that's kind of the story with regard to the Hartford. Um, it's 36 apartments. The parking, uh, we, we're in every community, I develop in, and we develop in, in, in the downtown areas. Um, parking is always an issue. Um, I was, uh, our company built the parking deck in uh, Oak Lawn next to the, the uh, Czech Children's Museum. We built the parking deck in LaGrange. Uh, behind the uh, retail along LaGrange Avenue. So parking decks are a great thing. They, they're, they solve a lot of issues. Uh, the, the metro parking that the village has recently acquired out here, 120 spaces that after 5 p.m. and on weekends um, may, that will be available to customers, which um, customers is, is a key component to the success of downtown businesses. Uh, we feel increasing the density of the residents and 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 the uh, the amount of people that stay in these buildings will shop, uh, will eat, and and will spend money in in the in the downtown area. So I think it's a kind of a give and take. It's change is always difficult, but um, I think the vibrance of having more people centrally located in your business district, uh, there will be an increase in the in the, in the economics. Uh, over time. Mark? <clears throat> Our firm, uh, we do lots of uh, downtown redevelopment projects, uh, many of them that uh, you may have spoke of before, and uh, uh, one of the uh, audience members signed downtown Downers Grove, downtown uh, uh, Barrington, Naperville, Aurora, um, many of those communities, and they, they've all seen the same results. It The more people that come there, and they're not... Um, they're definitely not inexpensive of apartment staff. A lot of times, but, um, the perception is apartment renters um, don't bring any value to the community. And what we've found is more often than not, the buildings are filled with uh, older folks that don't want to, um, uh, they, they want to live in a walkable downtown area. They don't want to take and uh, drive their car when they go out to eat. They, they want to walk out their door. And, you know, quite frankly, a lot of times, some of those folks, uh, same folks have, they may go to Florida for the word. They don't want to be bound. To, um, and so the idea of uh, not owning a home and renting a home is very similar to a lot of people lease a car versus purchase a car. And um, we uh, we have a high um, uh, uh, expectation at the level of success for the Hartford building, just given by, um, quite frankly, the 44% of the people that have um, committed to move into the building haven't even seen the inside of it yet. And um, we're hoping to start hard hat tours in the next couple of weeks. And so our expectation is, is that we'll be at 100% uh, lease by the time we open the door. So it's, uh, it's been a great project. Uh, uh, the community's welcomed us. We're grateful for um, the experience we have. And we just, we want to do the right thing. We want to be invested in the community. And uh, this, uh, the proposal we put forth for the, um, uh, for the parking lot here, we just think that 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 success will continue to compound on one another to uh, just bring a lot of vibrancy to uh, maybe some underutilized assets in the community. Okay. Uh, could you just briefly, granted it's a letter of intent that's on the agenda this evening, just your vision for what you would see on the parking lot? Well, we we see a building that's, uh, I'm just going to use 60 units as a round number, 59 is uh, what we've uh, preliminary looked at where we would have inside parking on the first floor of the building. Um, this building will be a, a very amenity rich building, fitness center with an outdoor uh, outdoor recreational area up on the roof of the building. 
that we would also have some co-working space within the building for the residents. So a lot of things and amenities that you would see in uh, maybe buildings in downtown Chicago or just some more, uh, what we would call a class A uh, apartment living, which may not be, um, when people think about apartment buildings, they just don't have those, those types of spaces. So the residents can do, you know, if they go and only go to their office maybe two days a week, they can work from home three days a week. And there's there's a conference facilities, there's shared working facilities, and they can go to the gym in the middle of the day. There's there's all types of those types of things that um, bring a lot bring a lot of benefits and a lot of interest to uh, to the to the renters. Um, the indoor parking is, uh, you know, quite frankly, is there so. People who want to get off their elevator, walk over to their car, and it's not outside. Just like you, some of you who live in a single family home might have a garage uh, attached to your house or behind your house that you would go to. Uh, and then we certainly have proposed for in this site, we definitely have a number of um, outside visitor and community parking spaces and some of where the, the areas where the geothermal wells are for to provide the, the heating and cooling source for the, the village hall here. Okay. How no. you, know, you know, I don't know. Again, this, this is when the plans come in. Yeah. Right now, we're talking we're, about the yellow light. Right around 70 indoor parking space and somewhere like that. You know, if it's going to be parking on the first floor, there's no mixed use on the first floor. You know, we, we haven't got to a final design. Yet. We're really working in just schematics. If there's okay. Thank you. Board comments, please. Trustee Willis. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I want to say, I'm I haven't been on the board very long, but I've never seen this many people here, and it is really important. And it's, I'm glad that there are, because what has happened is that um, a lot of the comments I've heard give me a lot to think about, things that I wouldn't have considered before. So it's always good to have people here to give their input. Um, there are a lot of things that I know that I hear you want to be address addressed, um, um, and this is a letter of intent. And I uh, want to see if they address them, give them an opportunity. And if, if they aren't addressed to your satisfaction, to our satisfaction, then we can tell them to go packing. But I do uh, would like to see, uh, give them the opportunity to have them addressed. That's my comment. Does he call? I think what you said makes sense. Um, but I just have some real concerns about this whole thing. I feel like it, we're moving very fast on it. Um, I think that we don't currently have, you know, I mean, the Hartford building is there and it, it's going to come in and we have studies and we have predictions and we have ideas on what it's going to look like, but I need to see the results and see what's going to happen with the parking and see what's going to, because I think you can, you can like imagine things and you can plan for things and you can sort of try to schedule things, but then reality hits. Um, and I would rather reality hit when we still have time to address it. So I'm not saying I'm going to say no to this because I don't know yet. I don't think we have enough data. Um, but I just think to rush into this and to make this decision too quickly without getting the data, I don't think that that's going to be because we, we will get to the point of no return. And once we start putting money into it, well, then we have to finish, you know, and then maybe we realize that we had made some wrong decisions. I just want to take this slowly. I think that it's a big decision. I think it could be great. I think it could be terrible. I think it could be anything. I don't think we know anything yet. So I am not going to support this uh, letter of intent yet. Trustee Heiferman. I, I see no other option then to support it because otherwise we won't know what's being proposed. This has been um, the first proposal for this property was in two as far as in my memory is two thousand I'm sorry in, in um, 2006 before the bank had been redeveloped right. there was a proposal for a there was a parking ramp I believe I believe there's a movie theater proposed um, and there were residences proposed where there was actually a sales center in the lobby of what was the what was the bank um, the economy changed, that project disappeared over the years. And again, not to say this is being, just to say it's not being rushed. This property has been talked about um, both in formal and informal uh, requests for proposal for well over a decade. So um, I'd like to see a serious proposal and uh, if it fits within 
what we want, because what we want is what the public wants, I do believe. Um, we'll see how it pans out. And um, I'm excited to see something and I'm um, anxious to uh, go move. Just to hear a chance. Um, I agree with one of the residents said that um, we are landlocked. Everyone knows that. We don't have a lot of places to build, like for instance, Madison. They have all of this land. They have the um, uh, place where it used to be the um, the um, shopping, Lincoln Mall. They have plenty of land to build. We don't, we are landlocked. But the letter intent um, to me has to be accepted. But I agree with all of you all coming out, giving your input. We appreciate you coming out to support whatever is going on here or disagreeing with whatever is going on here. But we need your input also as residents. We really do need your input and we appreciate you coming out. Like uh, Trustee Willis said, this is a great time to have all of you all here with us to give your input. We appreciate all of your activities that coming in and giving us what you think. We, we, we're here to listen, to hear everything that you have to say. And please come back to all of our meetings so that we can understand what your feelings are about what's going on in Homewood. Okay. Our goal has always been to uh, bring more people into the downtown to assist the shopping and the restaurants. Uh, this is a step toward that. This is part of our vision as a community. Uh, I appreciate Mr. Flanagan, Mr. Carlson being here this evening. And as you know, this is a first step. I'm sure you've taken note of what the comments were from the ladies and the gentlemen in the audience and uh, you'll implement them in your next presentation. With that, may I have a motion to approve the LOI letter of intent with HFC Homewood for 2024 Chestnut Street? Second. Then moved by Trustee Willis, seconded by Trustee Heiferman. Roll call, please. Trustee Willis. Aye. Trustee Colton. No. Trustee Heiferman. Aye. Trustee Harris-Jones. Aye. And I'll vote aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all for your comments. I appreciate it. We heard you all. General board discussion, Trustee Willis. Well, he's not here. I just want to say happy birthday to my husband. And also to thank everybody. You're turning back for the party. Trustee <laughs> Colton. Um, yeah, and no, I want to echo what a lot of people have said. I'm so glad to see these chairs full. Um, this is exactly what an engaged community looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm delighted to see everybody out here. Um, we've been doing, we've been trying on the board, I've been trying to get the word out and to get people engaged. And I know that Mr. Haney and I've had a lot of conversations and I think the, the village staff has done an excellent job getting more information out. Um, and the missing piece has always been like, if there's nobody here, we can't, we, we're, we're not mind readers, you know, we need you guys to come and tell us what you think. And I'm so grateful for you being out here. We're here seven o'clock on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. And I'd love to see you guys again. So thank you so much for coming out. Thank you. Trustee Heiferman. I'm thrilled people are here. Um, I, I would also offer that if you want to take the discussion further on any aspect of it, whether there's a proposal or not, on the first Monday of every month, I um, hold a little coffee meet and greet at the Starbucks on Harwood at five o'clock. Um, rain or shine, I'm there. And if you'd like to have, you know, it's a casual thing. Sometimes there's a couple of people sitting around. Sometimes it's me and one other person. Um, but do feel free to stop by and uh, have a meaningful discussion. Just to hear it, John. As again, I would like you all to please, please come and give your input, your voices. We appreciate it. We need to hear from you all. We really do. Public comment is wonderful. Uh, Trustee Heiferman has his office hours. Most of you know that I'm at the Village Hall every Saturday morning, 9 to noon. I have no life whatsoever. So you're more than welcome to come in. I, I look forward to seeing you all then. With that, may I have a motion to enter into executive session to discuss collective bargaining? So, okay. It's been moved by Trustee Colton, seconded by, by Trustee Willis. Roll call, please. Trustee Willis. Aye. Trustee Colton. Aye. Trustee Heiferman. Aye. Trustee Harris-Jones. Aye. Aye. As well. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. I know.